This conference will now be recorded. Okay, good. Okay, so in just a few days' time, in just a few days' time, we have the holiday of Shavuot, right? Thursday, Saturday night, Sunday, Sunday night, Monday is the holiday of Shavuot. All who can join us, we're having a wonderful all-night learning, focusing on the messianic aspects, the false messiahs, the real messiah, hints in the Torah, hints throughout the Nevi'im. Um, I'll be presenting, people are presenting. It should be a beautiful evening. So look forward to all those who can join us, joining us. So let's focus a little bit on Shavuot, because we would have imagined that you know, Pesach, God splashes it out there. Keep the holiday of Pesach. Because this is the day that God, with wonders and signs and miracles, took you out from the land of Egypt. And therefore, we have the mitzvah at the end of every day. We say the third paragraph of Shema. We say it no, numerous times. And we fulfill the, the uh, right? Remember, I am Hashem, your God, who took you out from the land of Egypt to be for you a God. I am Hashem, your God. So Pesach, it's all splashed out there. Exodus, Exodus, Exodus. That's what it's all about. And we think that Shavuot, the Torah would splash out there. Matan Torah, the one time that the heavens opened up and heaven met earth, and God spoke, and a whole nation heard all other religions. We always say every religion has its, every religion has to have its revelation narrative, because a religion is us down here doing what God up there wants us to do. So, of course, the great question is, how in the world do we know, how do we down here know what God wants, up there wants us to do? And the answer every religion gives is a revelation narrative. Well, God imparted that knowledge to us. How did God impart the knowledge to us? And that's where all religions differ from Judaism. How did God impart that knowledge to us? All religions say, well, there was a prophet. There were disciples. God appeared to him, God appeared to them. There were these, these uh, metal plates with a special message that Joe Smith came across and no one else ever saw, right? So, so that's, there's always been a very, very secretive, personalized narrative. And if you believe that narrative, you got a religion. If I were to say to you last night, God came to me in a dream and told me that we need to start a new religion, we're calling it scenerism. If I'm convincing enough, we've got it. My, my guess is I'm not convincing enough. I'm not going to have too many adherents, right? But Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, was God appearing to the entire nation. Every single person experienced it. So no one's telling them what they experienced. Rather, everyone feels what they themselves experienced. So we would expect the Torah to splash this out there. The same way that Pesach is splashed out there, we would expect Shavuot to be splashed out there. But it's not a splash. It's not even a splatter. It's not a drizzle. It's not a mist. It is the hidden holiday. So let's together look at some sources on this. First of all, let's see number one, the Ramban. The Ramban who goes through this idea that Shavuot is called Atzeret. We're familiar with Shemini Atzeret. We have seven days of Sukkot, followed by a distinct separate holiday, no longer eating in the sukkah, no longer shaking a little of an etrog, no longer the whole series of, of sacrifices that were brought. It's a break in that series. We say Shehechianu. There's a whole new holiday called Shmini Atzeret. And Atzeret means 
to gather in. The Torah also Rabbi, called Ruot by the name Atzeret. Yes, Steve. I, I'm sorry. Could could you enlarge the uh, the, the the printed information? Uh, That's an excellent question. Let me try my. You best. can do it on your screen too, Steve. Depending on your uh, settings. Oh, I I see. Yes, I, I see that. Up to I the right, it should be, at least on mine. Oh, I got it. I got it. Okay, is that better, Steve? Steve, you're on mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Okay, good. All right. Good. Thank you for pointing that out to me, Steve. That should be better now. So the Ramban writes as follows. So Shavuot is also called Atzeret, which is like a closing, a gathering in. And he explains, Vitziva b'chag matzot. We were commanded on the holiday of Matzot, Pesach, Shiva Yamim b'kedusha l'fnei malachareyim. Seven-day holiday, okay, we have eight days, that's outside of Israel. According to Torah in Israel, it's a seven-day holiday with Kedusha beginning, Kedusha and end. We have Kedusha holiness as our book ends of all of those days. Umana mimenu. And then we count from there, Tishav Arbim Yom. We count from there, 49 days. Today's the 47th. We're getting close. The Kidesh Yom Shmini Kashmini Shel Chag. Interesting. And then that eighth day, that day that follows the seven sevens, the 49 days, that eighth day is like Shmini Shilchag. It's like the eighth day of Sukkot. And the interim days between Pesach and Shavuot are Kecholo Shalmoe. They're like Chol Hamoe, the intermediate days that we have between the Rishon and Shmini Bechag, between the first day of Sukkot and Shmini Atzeret. In other words, the Ramban uh, in beautifully depicts that all of these days, that instead of looking at it, well, we had Pesach, that's over with. And then we're counting days, and then we have Shavuot as a completely disparate holiday, no, we have the first day, we have the last day, and we have the intermediary Cholo Shomoe days. The seven days of Pesach is like the one block on one bookend. And then we have our intermediary days of counting Sphira, and then Shavuot is the culmination of all that. Vuhu Yom Matan Torah. This is the day of the giving of the Torah. Sher Ambo at Isho Hagdola, that we saw his great fire, Udvarav Shamu, and his words we heard, every single person heard, Mitoch Haesh, from that fire. V'lakach Yikru V'seinu Zal, V'chom HaKom Chag Shavuot Atzeret. That's why the sages refer to Shavuot as Atzeret, a gathering in. Ki hu ki yom shmini shel chag shekaru hakat of Cain. It's like the eighth day of Sukkot, or the eighth day that follows Sukkot, that the Torah calls it Atzeret. It's a time to gather in. So too, this is part and parcel of that whole Pesach. As we've been explaining, Pesach was the physical exodus. The seventh day of Pesach, the splitting of the sea, and the death of the Egyptian army was the completion of the physical exodus. And then we come to Shavuot, which is the spiritual Exodus. And the Sefer HaChinuch explains about this incredible day. Let me move it down, sorry. And he writes as follows. 
Source number two, Levisha call Ikaran Shal Yisrael, the very essence of the Jewish people, Eino Ella HaTorah, is nothing but the Torah. When they had Torah, and because of the Torah, Nivru Shemayi Vaaretz Yisrael, our belief is that in order for give humankind the ability to have a relationship with God, that is why the world was created. Right? God does not need a world, but he offers human beings the, 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 the pinnacle of the physical world creation and creatures, the ability to connect to God. And Israel was the nation that, as Nebuchadnezzar, as, excuse me, Derech Hashem explains, that during the time period of what he calls the roots, that only one who decided to really connect to God was Avraham. And therefore, it's through Avraham's children, all of us, that this mission is fulfilled. This is the reason why we were redeemed from Egypt. So we would accept the Torah on Sinai and fulfill it. As Hashem said to Moshe, This is the sign that I have sent you. When you take the nation out from Egypt, you will all serve God on this mountain. This is what God was saying to Moshe when Moshe was already by that mountain, by the burning bush. But that one burning bush turned into an entire mountain that was then aflame. flame. And since that's the case, this is the essence of Israel. And for this reason, we were redeemed and we reached the height that we did. And it's Davina, we're commanded Limnot to count from the day after Pesach until the day of the giving of the Torah to show the tremendous desire we have to this wonderful day that we feel in our hearts like a servant who's looking forward to the shade and he's counting, when will I reach my freedom? Counting shows that my all my hope, all my want, my aspiration is is to reach that time. That is the, the essence of this day, which makes our original question that much more glaring. Because the Torah does not splash this out. Which brings us to source number three, the Kli Yakar, who speaks about this question that we have. The Kli Yakar quotes the Pasuk. And you will bring, after you count those seven weeks, 49 days, you will bring a mincha chadasha la Hashem, a new offering to God, which is the shtei halechem, the two loaves of bread, which is, according to some, the reason why we have the dairy, the custom to have dairy on, the custom to have dairy on Pesach, on Shavuot, sorry, to remember the shtei halechem, because if you're having both dairy and meat, first dairy, of course, and then meat, you need to have two different loaves of bread. And that's how we remember the Shtei HaLechem. So the Pasuk says you need to bring this new offering, this Mincha Chadasha, which is a Siman Lamatan Torah. The words Mincha Chadasha, a new offering, is a Siman. This is the sign, the indication of Matan Torah. Why is Torah called a new gift? Ki the Torah needs to be new, fresh by a person every day. That we need to feel that I received it today on Mount Sinai. And that the Torah does not explicitly mention. This is the day of Matan Torah. 
Why is that? Our question, or really our question was actually his question. And he explains. God did not want to limit it, to bound it to one day. Because a person needs to feel every day I wake up and I am receiving this Torah. The Alkane, and therefore the sages said, Ah, oh, I saw that already. Oh, I know that already. Right. Imagine, right? We all remember our kids saying, I know, I know already. You told me that already. Right? So the Torah needs to be this fresh, this fresh um experience. This fresh revelation. The Torah needs to be chadashim. Because in fact, every day that a person studies, every time a person studies, we see something new. We see another layer. And the amount of layers that we can see is endless because it goes beyond what humans can comprehend. Therefore, the day of its giving is not explained to the Torah more than this hint of mincha chadasha, of this new offering. Lohorot to show sha Torah mincha chadasha bechol yom v'yom. The Torah is this new offering that comes each and every day. And it's interesting because we find the same thing in regard to another aspect. And that is Har Sinai, Mount Sinai. Where is Mount Sinai? Somewhere in Midbar Sinai, somewhere in the Sinai Desert, that which Israel captured in 1967 and gave back in the early 1980s as part of the, uh, the Camp David Accords of Begin and Sadat, right? And to make peace, to have the peace treaty with Egypt. And as a teenager in Israel, this is before, I was there in Israel before the Sinai was returned to the Egyptian sovereignty. And I had a five day Sochnut Jewish agency tour to the Sinai. And it was incredible. It was beautiful in its stark, um, barren, beauty and we came to a mountain that we believe is mount sinai are we sure no we're not sure but we think that that was mount sinai and we climbed mount sinai and we davened at the top of mount sinai but we don't really know that that's mount sinai why because it's not about the place and it's not about the time if it's about the place, so then I go visit there and then I leave it behind me. If it's about the time, I reach that time and then I leave it behind me. Now, of course, we do give credence and there are special, special opportunities, as we'll soon see some other sources. But the Torah did not want to say that's the day because then that's the day that I commemorate it. And then I leave it behind until another 353 days rolls around when I commemorate it again. But therefore, the Torah said, not only does it not give the, does it not splash out what it is, but it says, Mincha Chadasha. It's because it's meant to be this Chadasha, this renewed, constant renewing. Yes, David. Um, could you explain um, how? Two new loaves becomes, if I hear correctly, a dairy meal and then a meat meal, because uh, frankly, there is no um, prohibition against being a complete vegan. So you, you don't have to have either one of them, but you could have two challahs, correct? So. Yes, yes. So this, the, 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 there are different reasons that are given for the dairy, for, for eating dairy. The Chavetz Chai, the, the Mishabrua brought a reason that once we finished Mount Sinai, it was like, 
Ayvei, we don't have a kosher kitchen over here. Yeah, yeah. We have to start shechting the meat. We need the proper knife. It needs to be checked properly. Then we need to remove different parts of the animal before we can eat it. There are fats, there are nerves, and then the blood, and then the salting, and the and and and, and, and our cooking utensils are in kosher. So they said, you know what? Let's just have cheesecake instead, right? That's what they decided. Let's just go to dairy instead of over there. Right? That's the reason he brings. The Ramah, though, brings a reason as follows. If I'm eating with my hands, then I can't use the same loaf of bread for a meat meal with my greasy meat fingers than, and use that for a dairy meal. Right. So actually, there is somewhere the custom, they'll start the meal with dairy and then clean off the dairy and then bring out a separate loaf of bread and then have the meat meal, the same meal, starting with dairy and then transitioning to meat. It has to be in that order, of course, right? Starting with dairy and then going to the meat. So you're yeah, asking, I guess my question is, does it ever, does it ever right? don't feel, have two loaves of bread? Right. Is that what you're asking, David? That was David? the commandment. Right. Right. Okay, thank you, Rabbi. Yeah, but like this, it forces us to have two completely separate loaves that we're working with. Okay, let's continue. So therefore, we don't want to splash out that this is all about that day, then it leaves in the past. However, however, it is very important. Let's see the Peloyoites, number four. Atzeret. Atzeret Huchag Kadosh Maod. It is a very, very holy, very holy holiday. Asher bo kiddishanu Hashem barach. That that's the day where God made us Kodesh, made us holy, b'Torah to with His Torah, or mitzvotav and His mitzvot and the commandments, or bachar banim ikol ha'amim liot lo la'am segula, and chose us amongst all the nations to be to Him this treasured nation. V'ilav hayom adikagaram, and were not for this day, Kestom hayinu lamora damina, which is a, pl- a play on words. There is a pasuk that says like that. We will be like stone in amora. The chukot shemayim aris lo nitkaimu, and the heavens and earth would not have their continued existence. Oven shara uila samech bayom hazeh. Therefore, this is a day where we should be rejoicing. The ef shar shelo lisamech, and it's not possible not to rejoice. The, the joy, the good of Torah and mitzvot is greater than all the, the pleasures of this world and the entire life of the next world, which of course is, is a reference to the mission that we have in Pirkei Avos that says that one moment of pleasure in the world to come is greater than all the pleasure of this world. Right, but one moment of accomplishment, Torah and mitzvah in this world is better than all the next world because one is in terms of receiving reward, and that's in the next world. The other is in terms of doing, in terms of accomplishing, and that is over here in this world. And it's also interesting to note that the source number two was a Sefer Achinuch, which spoke about how a, a slave can't wait for his freedom. And many would say, yeah, giving the Torah, that's not freedom. That is so restrictive. That is, that is, uh, we, we became avadim to Hashem, servants to God, which is true. But at the same time, we say that the words were charut, charut al haluchot, were literally engraved on the stones, on the stone tablets. And our sages say, al tikre charut el acherut. Don't read it as engraved, read it as cherut. A person only has their freedom when we are in control of ourselves and able to control ourselves and, and to live this world with parameters, with boundaries. That is the true, true cherut that a person has. And that is our rejoicing on this day, right? Even though we don't want it to be just on this day, but we do rejoice on this day of the giving of the mitzvot. The, I have a story here that I included 
the great sage of the Aaron Cutler was delivering a lecture in which he remarked that a person who provides the funds for Torah study will enjoy the same reward in the next world as the Torah scholars themselves. This is the idea of a Yisachar Zavulun relationship, as it's called, amongst the tribes, the sons of Yaakov, of Jacob. Zavulun was the merchant, and he would, he would support Yisachar, who were, this, who were the Torah scholars, the ones who would determine the new moon and all that. And they had equal reward. Not only that, but Zavulun is mentioned first. After his lecture, he was approached by a wealthy man who challenged him, Rabbi, why should I bother to exert myself to study the Torah? All I have to do is to make donations to Torah institutions, and I'll be assured immeasurable reward in the world to come. Rav Aaron looked at the person with, ser with seriousness and said, it's true that your portion in the world to come will be the same but your life in this world will not be comparable. When a person has that sense of accomplishment, of spiritual growth, that is something that cannot be compared to other things. The next source, the Sif Chaim, source number five, right, brings out the point that I mentioned before about the revelation narrative Right, and he's really working off of the Kuzari that Judaism is unique in this national, nationwide revelation. This was a faith based on Nevua, on something that we saw, Nevua, in prophecy, the Chushit. It was tangible. The Cholaam Roim et Hakolot. It says that all the people saw the sounds. And the sages point out, how do you see a sound? Ro'in et hanishma. They saw that which is normally heard. And he explains, Something that we see is more, as he says here, distant conceptually, less clear than that which a person sees. And they, on the level of prophecy that they reached, they saw something that was distant in a very tangible, close manner. They saw God's revelation to Moshe without any separation or barrier. That will hold them back, may re'iyat from seeing, experiencing this revelation. The Alkain, may Ida Torah, the Torah testifies, Vigam Becha Yaminu Laolam. Also in you, Moshe, they will believe forever. Misha Ra'ab Gilu Hashem Bekazu Re'iyachushit, and when Atohi Laolam, right? That had this lasting, tangible effect. The way that I like to explain it, let's say someone is outside my office. Right, and it sounds like Basil, but instead Steve walks in. So what do I say? I say, "Oh, Steve, you sounded like Basil." I don't say, "Oh, Basil, you look like Steve." Right, meaning he sounded like Basil, and then Steve walks in. So what do I realize was wrong? My hearing was off. It sounded like Basil, but I. See now it's Steve. What I see is what I get. That's it. I don't say, oh, I don't go based on my on my hearing and say, oh, sounded like Basil. So now who walks in? Steve, Steve, you look like Basil, right? Oh, Basil, you look like Steve. No, it's Steve. You sounded like Basil. The re'ia, the, the re what we see, overrides that which we hear. Their experience, experience was such that they they saw that which they had heard that was how clear and and definite this revelation was to them rob dessler explains very beautifully and this is a concept an important concept that he uses throughout all of the holidays and that is the way that we view time time is not simply starting at one point and then just working its way out the time 
is cyclical and we keep coming back to these different points right we say the miracles happened bayamim haheim in those days bazman hazeh at this time not simply at this date it's not a calendar commemoration of a date but rather we re-enter the zone again that spiritual quality that spiritual availability that was maximized at the time of the holiday we re-enter that zone every year at the time so we understand that when it comes to rosh hashanah it's not simply that that's the day that adam was created and adam was judged but rather it's the day that we are recreated and we are judged we understand that we re-enter that phase that place that experience and now it's us and so to yom kippur it's not simply the day that god forgave the nation and moshe came down with the second tablets which inherently contained the message of Salahti, I have forgiven you. But every year on Yom Kippur, we too enter that mikvah, that, those cleansing waters of Yom Kippur, and we too become purified. We too are forgiven. And Pesach is a time, as we've discussed before, that we see it in the physical world, and the physical world is a is a a manifestation of what's happening in the spiritual realm. And that's why Pesach, we have to adjust our calendar. I said another 354 days. Well, if that's the case, that a Jewish calendar is 354, we're running 11 days short every year. But don't worry, seven out of every 19 years, we add a month to stay in sync with the seasons, with the solar seasons. Because Pesach has to be in the springtime because that is a time of rebirth of rejuvenation and that is a time so too the the rebirth and the spring blossoms that we see here in the physical world are a physical manifestation of the opportunity of rebirth of regrowth of freedom that exists in the spiritual realm so pesach time we re-enter that pavilion that zone that tachana of zman that station of time. And so too he explains over here by Shavuot. And he writes, source number seven, each Shavuot, we spiritually arrive at that same point of sanctity experienced by our forefathers at Mount Sinai. It is once again, in a real sense, Zman Matan Torah Tenu the time of the giving of our Torah, and we are invited to accept it anew, as they did 3,300 plus years ago. On Shavuot, we have to work in order to receive the Torah. We have to struggle to acquire it in our hearts. We have to appreciate its truths as unchangeable verities. The nation still harbored lingering doubts up until that point. Only when they heard God's voice at Sinai was doubt replaced by absolute certainty. So too, when we learn Torah today, and especially at Shavuot time, can we, if we wish, still hear the same voice? The Torah is what gives us that same clarity i'll share with you when i was a a teenage student in yeshiva high school i was not the most motivated of students in my religious studies i was among the least motivated of my class when it came to religious studies i was valedictorian in my english studies and i was not doing very well in my religious studies which just caused that much more frustration to my rabbis and teachers because I was capable, but I was not overly interested. And, but the thing that kept me from just leaving it behind, as much as I was hoping that I could rationalize doing it, because at that point in my life, I felt it was just restricting me from 
doing my thing. But I knew too much. That was my problem. And I has a whole Beit Midrash, a whole study hall in the yeshiva of older guys studying. And the books and the walls were lined, lined, lined with Sfarim. And I knew what those Sfarim contained. And I knew how it evaluated every word and every letter and every nuance of the Torah. And I knew that that a, a, a book written by a bunch of released slaves as they're traveling through the desert, this was not. There's no way that that could have the profundity and the depth and, and, and to be analyzed to the point that it's analyzed, right? The greatest mitzvah we have, the Talmud Torah, Keneged Kulam, studying Torah. God wants us to plumb its depths more and more and more and gain more and more and more. Kechadashim, like new, as we started with earlier today. And it was my understanding, my, my, my knowledge of just how deep and wide and expansive the Torah was that said to me, I can't just leave this behind and I have to give this a chance. And therefore, after high school, I spent a year in Israel to give it a chance. And I was thankful that instead of me giving it a chance, it gave me a chance and, uh, and enabled me to, uh, to come back in and, uh, and to become a part of it. But that's what he's saying over here. So too, when we learn Torah today, and especially at Shavuot time, we can, if we wish, still, still hear that same voice of the truth and the unchangeable verities. That is what this holiday of Shavuot is about. But of course, as we said before, in the name of the Kliyakar, it needs to stretch out throughout the entire year. Rav Desla continues on source number eight. Musbarim heitev divrei chazal. We can understand now well the words of the sages on the pasuk. Bayom hazeh ba'u midbar sinai. On this day, they came into the midbar, the desert of Sinai. Lo yasarich l'ktov ele bayom ahu. Right, the Torah is telling us what happened, past tense. It should have said, on that day they came. Why does it say, mahu bayom hazeh? Why does it say, on this day, in the present tense? Shiyu divrei Torah chadashim alecha. The words of Torah need to be new to you, fresh to you, ki ilu Hayom nitnu, that you need to feel that it's it's as if today it was given. The Hainu meaning ki b'chol eight she'adam lo made at the Torah karaoi. At every time that a person learns Torah in a proper manner, mikabel shefa chadash, the person receives this new shefa, this new flow, this new influence that comes down. Me'et Hashem Yitbarach, from God. Mamash, literally, Kebe'et Netinat HaTorah B'Sinai. Like it was when the Torah was given on Sinai. Lachain, therefore, Tamid, who? It's never on that day they came to Sinai. It is Bayom Hazeh, on this day. Make this day the day. Ka'oto Hayom Sheba'u. Limidbar Sinai. Just like that day where in the past tense they came to Midbar Sinai, we have the opportunity every day to enter into this Midbar Sinai and to have this revelation and to have this clarification of truth, of mission, of purpose in life. Not by Yom Ahu, but rather by Yom Hazer. I, I should have stated before the, today's learning it was sponsored very kindly by um, in honor of Beverly Plitt, Alea Shalom. Beverly passed away this week. Um, a wonderful woman, and her children, her children Ashlyn, Gabriel, and Levy, sponsored it. The funeral is going to be tomorrow. She passed away yesterday, and. Uh, so we are learning 
Le'iloi nishmata, to help elevate her soul. And what a beautiful thing that is the children who got together to, uh, the, 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 actually, the, the, they are young children. They're all in their 20s, maybe early, early 30s. All young children who, uh, who got together. So the learning will be, or the learning has been, and should serve Le'iloi nishmata. So that is this, this mix that we have of Shavuot, that we don't want to limit it to this one day. It is a daily, but we need, or it's advantageous to use this day as a springboard. This day does have, as Rav Dessler said, we enter into the Tachana, Zman, the time station of Zman Matan Torotenu, but that Zman Matan Torotenu, even though it was on a certain day, it's not limited to that day in the same way that it was on a specific mountain, but it's not limited to that mountain. So our objective is to take this, this holiday of Shavuot and make sure that it becomes a, a daily experience. And, and we have the custom leading up to that so Saturday night, there is all night learning. We start about 10.30, and we go all the way till 5 a.m. when we start to Davin Shacharit. But it's not all or nothing. You know, my, my policy, it's never all or nothing. But you know, those who can go the night, you'll be surprised how fast the time goes and how much uh, energy, I guess the cheesecake doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt, but how much energy a person can have as we go through the night. And it's actually energizing. I, I've gone into Shavuot in the past. I forget what year it was, number of years ago. What I was going on, I was exhausted going in. I felt so depleted going in. And I, I think to myself, how am I going to stay up, the, A, stay up the whole night, and B, not just stay up, but try to energize others. But the night is energizing. It is man matan So uh, give it a shot. Give it a try. It's not all or nothing, but come... Come for part of the night, and you'll and you will enjoy. And who knows? Who knows how long you might end up staying? Okay, everybody. Once again, Le'ilai Nishmat, Blume Ita, Bat Lana Rachel. Allah Shalom. Wishing everybody a good Shabbos and a good uh, Shavuot. Shavuot will be Sunday, Monday. So the classes, uh, the online classes, will only resume next week, Tuesday morning is when we will resume our classes next week. Okay, everybody. Good Shabbos, good Yom Tov, and I look forward to seeing you. No excuses. Good Shabbos. Okay, everybody. Be well. Thank you. Bye, Rabbi. Shabbat Shalom v'chai Rabbi.